Okay, let's talk about linear momentum and collisions. So we'll start with linear momentum and the definition there, impulse, conservation of momentum, elastic collisions and inelastic collisions, as well as collisions in two dimensions and rockets. Okay, so momentum, anything that moves with a velocity V and has a mass M has something called momentum. And it's how difficult it is to stop it once it gets moving. And momentum is defined as mass times velocity of an object. So if something is moving at 8 meters per second and it's 110 kilograms, then the momentum is just mv. Bink. All right. Um, another way to write Newton's second law, F equals ma is equal to, you can write that F is equal to m uh, change in velocity divided by change in time. And so m times change in v is p over change in time. So you got mv uh, times, that gives you p, and then divided by t gives you uh, your f net. Okay, so that's another way to write Newton's second law, change in momentum over change in time. Now, if you bring the time on the other side of the equation, um, that's called the impulse. So if you're changing momentum, so you have f net equals change in momentum divided by change in time, if you bring the delta t up next to the f net, then you have change in momentum is f times delta t, and that is called the impulse. So this side of the equation is called j, the impulse. Okay, and that's just uh, how much you know when something hits you. That's the force delta t in order to stop it. Okay, um, so your force divided by your t. Okay, you can get the area under this. A couple different ways. These two areas are equal to each other, okay, and the area is F times T, and this is the impulse. This is the area under your curve. So if you have a really big spike, that can have the same area as a long skinny thing. So if you have a huge max force, but over a short amount of time, that's why we add airbags, is to try to have a lower max force over a longer period of time so that you get the same impulse but your max force is lower because you've extended the time of the collision. Okay, um, go through that. And we've got our rockets, change of momentum, and so on. Okay, so collisions. So I didn't miss any collision thing over here. No, okay. So collisions are, um, there's two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic collisions. And um, an elastic collision is where things bounce off each other. Dink, dink, they bounce off and momentum is conserved and kinetic energy is conserved. So you have two statements. Your initial momentum is equal to your final momentum, um, and your initial kinetic energy is equal to your final kinetic energy. So you've got two masses, M1, V1, M2, V2 before the collision, and M2, V2 after the M1, V1 plus M2, V2 after the collision. Then you also have their kinetic energies before and their kinetic energies after. But if you know their initial masses and your initial velocities, you can solve for your final velocities um, using these equations. And if one of them starts at zero, it's a little bit easier. Okay, um, so there's some examples there. Inelastic collisions, the kinetic energy is not conserved. In an inelastic collision, the objects stick together and you have to calculate um, what the total energy is. One half mv squared, oh, not that one. Total initial kinetic energy is that, but it is not conserved, so you can only use momentum in that case. So you say M1, V1, and that's that's your equation for solving those types of collisions. You don't have kinetic energy um, it being conserved. Okay, um, let's see, I go through those examples. 8.6, collisions of point masses in two dimensions. So in two dimensions, your uh, uh, balls, these two, tink, tink, hit, and then scatter off in two angles. So think about what you've got. You've got Vx and Vy. Initially, though, it's nice because your Vx is your velocity only in the x direction. Then when it hits that marble, they scatter off, and um, uh, you end up with you know, the x components and the y components gets pretty hairy. This is as complicated as it will get in this class. Um, the nice thing is you just have mv, mv before and after the collision. For this part one and then afterwards you just have the fact that the vx uh, components have to add together v1x plus v2x has to equal the initial x uh, coming in 
because there's nothing to create more. It gets decreased, but split between the two of them. And then you know that the y components of the velocities, v1y, has to equal v2y because you had no initial momentum in the y direction beginning, and so you better have no momentum in the y direction at the end. So in order for them to move off in the opposite directions, they have to have that conserved. Okay, so go through that to, to figure out how to do those problems. Um, and then we've got our rocket propulsion here, which we're not going to spend a lot of time on. Okay, so uh, in summary, momentum is mv. Impulse is force times time, or change in momentum. Uh, conservation of momentum says that your momentum before a collision is equal to the momentum after a collision. In an elastic collision, where they bounce off each other, you could have momentum conserved and kinetic energy conserved. But in the inelastic collision, uh, you can only have momentum conserved and you cannot have kinetic energy conserved. For uh, collisions of two objects in two dimensions, you have your two equations that you can solve uh, for um, knowing that your initial momentum is only in the x direction and your final momentum has to be canceled out in the y direction because you've got a total initial momentum of zero. Um, and then we didn't do rocket stuff. Okay, talk to you later.